welcome to the Green Lambkin Podcast, episode 14, I say with certainty, for a change. Uh, my name is Suzanne, I am Green Lambkin on Ravelry and Instagram, I am Green Lambkin Yarn on Facebook and on Etsy, and I think that's everywhere that I am that's of any interest to you all. So as I said, my name is Suzanne, I'm a knitter, crocheter, dyer, spinner, and many other things based in Chesterfield in Derbyshire, which is in England, where I live with my hubby and my two children and my pussycat Bramble. Uh, I have had an incredibly busy week. Um, I didn't podcast last week because everything was just a little bit too chaotic um, and I didn't really have an awful lot to show because I have been focusing on an event which happened on Saturday um, for which I've had to dye a lot of yarn. So that's why I've been so busy and not knitting. Um, so I'm going to tell you all about that event. But um, I'll come to that a little way down the line. Um, first of all, I want to tell you about an FO. Hurrah! I got this done in time for my event. I wanted it to be a display item. Uh, and this is a shawl of my own design, which people have shown a lot of interest in. And so I am going to be, I'm just finding the right side. I am going to be writing this pattern up. Well, I've already started writing this pattern up and having it test knitted. And I am going to be publishing it. So it's huge. It's a nice wide sort of handkerchief scarf style. And it has, um, if I start at this end, it has these stripes with, I'm not sure if you can see, oh yeah, you can see the eyelets. Stripes with eyelet rows. So garter stitch with eyelet rows for the majority of the shawl. And then when we come to this end, there's a large wide section at the bottom, which is um, two row stripes of the two colors, cobweb and bramble blended together. And then on the far edge, we have this lovely, um, why can I never remember the term for this technique? Um, knitted on, I know that's not what I mean, border. And to make sure that I used even quantities of both the yarns, where did I do it? Somewhere around here, yes. I actually um, two rows striped it together here and went from cobweb through and blended it through to bramble so it's knitted on a four millimeter um, needle I used my uh, knit pro nova cubics uh, on a fixed circular I think it was it's either at 80 or 100 centimeters I think it might have been an 80 uh, it was a very pleasing very simple knit um, I thoroughly enjoyed it and I've had, a, as I say, um, I took it to my event, which was for National Yarn Shop Day, uh, on Saturday and loads of people told me they liked it and loads of people told me they would like to knit it. So um, I am in the process of working on the, um, the pattern, but I do need to get it checked because I don't trust myself because I just winged it with this and I would hate to send it out to people and then everybody struggle with it. So, patience is a virtue, ladies and gentlemen, and it will be with you in due course. I also have to think of a name for it, which is not my strong suit for patterns. Yarn, yes. Designs, no. Um, so anyway, that's my F.O. I also have a hoe, which I will show you now. I believe I showed you last time that I was working on a pair of Christmas socks for Ivy. This is in a Christmas project bag, which my lovely dear children bought for me from Etsy, um, I think three Christmases ago now. And it's got these gorgeous trees on it in all these pretty vintage Christmassy colours. And then my little boy, because he decided he needed a brooch on it, and he helped me pin that brooch on, which I think is very pleasing. So anyway, whilst I was at... Um, Wise Heart Studio doing my lovely um, Yarn Shop Day event with the rest of the lovely ladies, I finished Ivy's first sock. So this is in West Yorkshire Spinner's um, Signature 4-ply, can't rem remember the name of the colour, 
but it's the bright sort of bubblegum pink which picks up perfectly with the little stripes in here this is my candy cane forest yarn uh, I've done a 52 stitch sock with um, traditional slip stitch heel flap gusset rounded heel turn normal pick up and knit with uh, knit two together um, and SSK decreases for the gusset followed by a traditional double decrease toe with a Kitchener stitch finish which is a little bit wonky because I was doing it in public standing up whilst talking about yarn so I'm quite proud of that so as is my usual um, stance I like to immediately start the second sock so that I don't it tends to not manifest into second sock syndrome if I do that so I then cast on a knitted several rounds of the rib of this sock which I'm really happy with this is one of my little Christmassy stitch markers that I made for myself last year and I'm knitting these on uh, knit pro um, fixed circular carbons I think these are 2.25 mil so I just wound a little ball of the um, signature off because that's uh, I didn't want to carry a huge 100 gram ball in my little bag um, and then this is what's left of the um, candy cane forest it's got bramble hair on it so I'm hoping there'll be plenty left for that last sock and a little something else at the end and that was my sample skein the first one I ever dyed so I'm glad to be using it all up I also have some of the gingerbread cottage like that as well and I'm thinking what I can make with that. So that's my haul. And then I have but, but one um, work in progress for you. Let me just write something down that I've forgotten. So when I come to acquisitions I can show you. that's that so I have bought one hoe to show no one whip to show um, I took Ivy to the um, big toy shop which is a few miles away from us it's Smith's toy superstore she'd been saving up her pocket money she tends to earn a pound each week if she's been if she's worked really hard in her swimming lesson on a Monday night I let her take the pound from the locker home with her um, and pop it in a piggy bank and then she often earns pennies for being helpful and if we've had a good day with her we'll give her 50p or whatever um, just sort of general reward and good behaviour and pleasantness um, and so she likes to save that up um, and she'd amassed quite a decent quantity and then what we'll do is we'll take a little trip out to um, sometimes we go to Toys R Us but this time she chose to go to um, Smith's Toys and she can treat herself so she and I'm surprised at this because she's not a dolly person usually she's a bit like me really I never really played a lot with dolls but she was determined and I think it's because her best friend has got these um, and I think she thinks that there'll be a lot of opportunities for them to play together with their dolls so she decided sorry <sighs> so she decided she wanted to get an our generation doll and these dolls are actually quite expensive you're usually looking at 35 to 40 pounds for a doll and they are 18 inch dolls so they're quite I can't even show you they're about that tall if you imagine it that way um, and they are little girl dolls as opposed to baby dolls um, now she bought a doll it was actually a, a Christmas themed doll and her name was Holiday Hope um, so because she was a Christmas one and it's m May end of April beginning of May she uh, she was reduced so she was £26.99 so I gave Ivy the extra £2 that she needed for the dolly um, and she was really really happy with that and Holly as we've called her to go with Ivy um, <clears throat> excuse me is a beautiful porcelain skinned doll with deep blue eyes and strawberry blonde hair which is scary because that's Ivy's colouring and interestingly 
Only 1% of the population have that, um, that mix of hair and eye colour. Um, so she's quite a rare colouring is our eyes. So anyway, um, I digress. The Christmas doll came in a beautiful Christmas outfit, so she wears um, a gorgeous dress, which is the top half is white satin, well, ivory satin, and the bottom half is a sort of a skater style, like flared out skirt made of this beautiful snowy fur fabric. Then she has like a very pale antique gold sequined bolero shrug thing, um, white net tights, and these really cute little um, sort of T-bar party shoes which are cream with gold glitter on them uh, and then she's got this lovely pearl pearly beaded headband in her hair and she's got very long hair uh, and I said to Ivy well she's beautiful but that's her party outfit really isn't it and we ought and her Christmas outfit and we ought to really sort out some everyday clothes for her um, now the outfits for these dolls generally come in at about 15 quid and I thought, well, when I was little, my grandma and my mum used to make dolly clothes for my dollies and my sister's dollies and things. And it turns out, as I started researching it, that the Our Generation dolls are the exact, well, very similar dimensions to the, um, what are they called? American Girl dolls. I think it's basically the same principle, same concept, but European rather than American. So I looked at it on Pinterest, I looked at it on Ravelry and was very pleasantly surprised to find that there are a multitude of both sewing and knitting patterns and designs out there for these dollies. Um, the sewing designs are really clever because a lot of them utilise your own children's clothes that they've grown out of, one of which is a pair of leggings. Uh, and I sorted out four pairs of leggings which no longer fit Ivy or have a hole in the knee or whatever um, and I, my sister's kindly taken those and she's going to make the little dolly some leggings meanwhile I am knitting her this really cute little yoked top I say little, it's not so little really so this is the front now I've split for the sleeves and I've worked quite a decent amount and then at the back it's open because obviously it needs to be open but you can't pull things over the heads very easily and down one side it has like a little moss stitch edging and on this side it has buttonholes, two there and then some, um, it will have to, it'll have a little loop on the neck edge so I have as I say gone that far down below the armhole so I need to probably do about the same again and then I'm going to do a pico edge now it suggests a pico cast off um, but I actually prefer the pico edge that you create when you do a row of rapid eyelets and then knit several rows stocking stitch after fold it up and then s slip stitch whip stitch the, the hem down inside I think it'll create um, a weightier finish and a neater finish to the to the top so that's what I'm going to do and then at Christmas when I did my uh, mini skein advent calendar with my lovely friend Paula um, one day there was this little jar full of teeny weeny buttons don't think you can really tell how small they are in there but they're just perfect and they're lovely colours to go with this top so I'm going to put some of these buttons on this one but it's a little bit of a fire under me this dolly knitting thing because there's so many lovely patterns I've got such lovely plans um, I found several really pretty dresses, uh, cardigans and jumpers, which I want to do for her, um, and a coat, a duffel coat, which is adorable. Um, I want to knit some socks and some knickers for her. Ivy wants me to do her some slippers. My sister's also going to have a bash at making her a little nighty because she puts her to bed every night in the dolly crib that was mine when I was little and it's so sweet. So she needs a nighty because at the moment she's getting wrapped up in a scarf to sleep. So I'm so happy that she's enjoying that. I have no worries about her not being a dolly girl because I never was and it's, I don't think it's done, done me any harm. I'm slurping the coffee. Sorry, a lot of coffee needed this morning. So, uh, that's that. 
so I'm going to I also um, I really want to get that finished today and I'm going to hopefully work on it a lot today because I've been so busy over the last week and the weekend because uh, on Saturday I was at Wise Heart Studio all day doing the um, pop-up shop at the beautiful studio uh, and then yesterday I was kind of making up for that so we went for a four and a half mile walk in the Peak District up Birchin Edge and then when we came back I was trying to do laundry, fill the dishwasher, cook a Sunday dinner do the ironing in the evening so I was really trying to cram it all in and, and make up for a week of chaos followed by a day away from the family at the weekend so I was really sort of flat out yesterday uh, and today I promised myself and everybody else that I was going to do some more work in the house try and catch up with everything and get on top of it uh, housework wise and I have been true to my word so far. I took the kids to school and preschool. I had a parent consultation at preschool, which was fantastic for little Cosy, all looking really good. Uh, then I went to Morrison's and did some food shopping and, um, you know, laundry liquid, dishwashers, tablets, all that kind of malarkey, which we'd run out of. I came back and I uh, we had a roast chicken last night so I swat a load of veg in with the carcass uh, and I'm making a big pot full of stock so which I will freeze ready for making soup when it's done so the stock's on the hob as we speak behind you uh, I put another load of laundry in the washing machine and put this lot that I did yesterday on the line um, I wrote my show notes while I had my brekkie and uh, yes after I have finished recording whilst you we are uploading I am going to sit down and I'm going to put one of my favorite films on because I've had um, a busy weekend with very little time to sit and rest my feet and I've also had lots of ideas recently about the um, the film that I'm going to watch which is Practical Magic and I would really like to do a colourway range based on it so that's what I'm going to do I'm going to sit with my knitting and my notebook and when uh, and the remote control and I'm going to look for um, scenes or concepts which I think would make nice colourways and I'm going to jot myself some notes and see what I come up with at the end so that's what I'm going to do after I finish recording before I have to start again with trip to the dentist followed by swimming lessons. Um, Mondays are always absolutely bonkers. It's the day when both the children are at school all day and I pretend to be three people and cram as much into the time allotted as I can. So, acquisitions. When I went to the uh, Spring Into Wool Festival at Leeds, I bought this yarn, Truly Hooked. And to be honest, at the time when I bought it, I was just so taken with the colours, I didn't really pay much attention to what the base was. And then I realised it was a Sparkle Singles, and it's uh, Merino, Nylon and Stellina. And I thought, if I want to knit this with anything else, I need to get more singles I really wanted to I didn't want to mix the two I wanted to have a whole shawl or whatever made out of purely singles yarn so I thought well I'll wait and see what I can see and then I discovered a fantastic new podcast called um, Be and Rose and this is a lady called Faye who is absolutely gorgeous and she lives um, Northumberland way and she dyed some apps absolutely beautiful singles I saw them in a shop and I thought that's perfect so this is B and Rose uh, and it's 70% extra fine merino 30% silk and it's 100 grams 400 meters and the colorway name is peony and it do you know it really reminds me of a peony or a hollyhock or a re like a double hollyhock really tightly clustered flower in in its cake form so it doesn't have sparkle but i don't mind that i like the contrast and i think you'll agree that these two are going to play beautifully together 
Um, and obviously I haven't knitted with them yet, but I am very taken with the singles. I've never dyed singles before and I want to. So when I next order yarn, I am going to order myself some singles. I'm not sure which singles base I'm going to go for. Maybe I'll try more than one. But I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to dye a really deep, dark, contrasting yarn and do a three colour shawl with these. A really deep, because this one, this Crocus Explosion, it has like really deep speckles of this really royal look even better there royal purple and it's split beautifully so i think <gasps> little intense pops of gold in there look so i think i'm going to do something like that but i'm not 100 percent sure yet okay Oh, um, I wanted to tell you also, the Bee and Rose podcast is fantastic. She's really, um, she's really entertaining. She's really engaging um, and lovely to listen to because she's got the most fantastic accent. Um, so I would highly recommend you go and check her out. She's fab. And then I might have already mentioned once or twice that I did an event for National Yarn Shop Day. Did you know that? Uh, and I thought it would have been rude not to buy the West Yorkshire Spinners Signature 4-ply yarn in the Yarn Shop Day colourway. It looks a little bit Union Jack, but it's actually like um, a lipstick pink and a fuchsia pink and then this lovely blue um, and then white. And I think it's fantastic and it knits up into sort of just a little bit less than inch wide stripes. And I think the I think the white sections between them are narrower. Uh, and I can't decide whether to knit myself a pair of socks out of this or ivy. So I thought I'll sit on it for a while, I'll see. And I think it will be really great with this yarn, which I could use for the heels, toes and cuffs if I wanted to. Might even get a pair for me and a pair for Ivy out of it because the yardage on these things is fantastic. It is 437 yards. So that was that. And then I met the most incredibly interesting lady at Wiseheart. Um, her name is Cheryl and she lives on a narrow boat which is just like, oh, so exciting. She showed me so many photos of her narrow boat. Um, she's not started touring on it yet with her husband because they're still working on it and they have to have it, in fact, I think today is the day when it gets inspected and they see whether it's passed its inspection so it can become water worthy. <laughs> um, but I've got everything crossed for Cheryl and Eric that they get it passed straight away so that they can start moving because she's so excited to start going and she's going to come because she lives down south and she came up on the train and um, I'm hoping that she's going to come nearer so that I can bump into her again because she really was the most lovely lady whilst she was here she bought yarn um, and my Wingardium Leviosa pattern which I'm going to show you in a bit uh, and she cast on she started knitting it in the um, water watermelon tourmaline colour white and it's just fantastic and she was showing it to everybody she was helping me to promote um and she was just so lovely and supportive and then she very quietly and sneakily sort of produced some crochet hooks um and they made their way around the room and they are glorious just look at this this is a cro a fimo meal fiore um fimo crochet hook which she has made i'm not really doing it justice I think I'll post some pictures on Instagram. It's got sparkles in it. <gasps> it's gorgeous. And I used it whilst I was there to make a crochet a sunflower because there's a, there's a sunflower project that the ladies at Wiseheart are doing. So I contributed a sunflower whilst I was there. I think this is a 3.5 mil hook, which is one of my favorite sizes. It's very adaptable. So it feels gorgeous and it looks gorgeous and I'm just so happy. Uh, so she's I think her company is called Cherry Pie 
Um, and I think some of these are going to be for sale in the not too distant future um, at Wise Heart Studio. So, fingers crossed. Um, she was just sort of trialing them out, but I cannot wait to start a project with these. With this, I need to uh, concoct an idea, <laughs> something I can make. So that's all my acquisitions. So let me tell you all about um, the event on Saturday. So it was National Yarn Shop Day. Uh, and all across the country, lovely independent yarn shops were inviting uh, local dyers and craftspeople into their shops and holding open events um, to promote themselves and local craftspeople. It's a fantastic idea. And I attended Wise Heart Studio with my lovely friends, um, Kate and Annie, who run the shop um, and are so supportive. Um, so I got there quite early on in the day to set up my stall. So this is the first event, that, yarn selling event that I've done because I've only ever really sold locally to friends and family um, through Wise Heart, but just, you know, them stocking my yarn and then through um, Etsy. So that's all I've ever really done. So it was a totally new experience for me. Um, so I got there early to set up. I used quite a lot of Johnny's hand-turned bowls, um, wooden bowls, and created a built-up display. I was, put my shawl on it and some other items which I'm going to show you in a minute. Um, and I shared a big table with Carrie, who is the dyer from Peak District Yarns. And she is the most wonderful lady. It could have been awkward, you know, it could have been a bit difficult, especially seeing as how we were sharing the space. But she was so amicable and so friendly and so helpful. It was just a lovely, heartwarming experience. She was so supportive and told me about some other events that I might like to get involved with. And we sort of helped each other out and chatted all day long. And she was knitting on a fantastic new shawl that she's going to be launching for Derbyshire Open Arts Week, which is the Spring Bank holiday. So if you're anywhere nearby, if you're on holiday in Derbyshire um, for Spring Bank weekend, or you live in the area, find a village or a town. But I would highly recommend that you go to Whaley Bridge because they've got so many fantastic events on and there's such a creative community there. Um, I think one lady's even going to knit a shawl out of some of my yarn for, for the event, which is fantastic. Um, so she's going to be launching her newest shawl pattern um, for that event and I think there's going to be two new yarn colours for it as well, which is glorious. Um, she works a lot with colourways which sort of represent... Um, places of interest in the Peak District, which is a fantastic, inspirational place. We're so lucky to have its own ear to us. So Carrie is, um, as I said, is the dyer behind Peak District Yarns, and she's very well established, very knowledgeable, very lovely person. Um, and I would encourage anybody who hasn't discovered her already to go over to her Facebook page um, and have a, or, or have a look at her on Instagram, because I think she's no, she doesn't have an Etsy shop. I think she has an independent um, in shop online, which you can uh, purchase the yarn from. And she also attends lots of events through the year to sell yarn. She is going to be at the um, Tideswell Artisan Market, which is on the 17th of June. Tideswell is another lovely, lovely place to visit. Uh, the Artisan Market has been held in the uh, church in Tideswell which is um, very famously known as the Cathedral in the Peak of the Peak and it is a beautiful church. I've been in it before. I sang in it once years ago when I used to sing with the Chesterfield Bark Choir and we went to do a... what did we sing? I think we sang St Matthew's Passion there. Um, and I'm hoping that I will attend that event also. Um, I need to finalise some things before I, I definitely book for it, but um, I'm fully on planning to, to be there. Um, and I would encourage everybody to come along and have a look. Um, I know I've invited a lot of you on Facebook already, but um, it's going to be fab. And all of the funds that are raised through the um, market stall holders, um, 
that's going to go to it's going to be donated towards the church um, and I think there's going to be fundraising activities there as well I would imagine um, I think it's going to be child friendly but I will check a little bit more um, into that and I will tell you more about it when I am booked on and definitely doing it and I'm fully versed in the, the ramifications of the event anyway back to Carrie she's also going to be at the artisan market which is held at Haddon Hall and I didn't even know this existed until she told me about it that's the 8th and 9th of July and I'm also going, hopefully going to be there. Um, yes, so again, Peak District Yarns, absolutely beautiful yarn. Um, lovely colourways, some really imaginative stuff, really vibrant. She's a little like me in that she really loves bright colours. Um, she likes the sort of the wow factor um, with her yarn. So, um, that's Carrie um, and also you need to go and look at Wild Spinner that's right isn't it Wild Spinner Spinster I need to check that <laughs> my brain uh, Annie who is one half of the duo who um, own and run Wise Heart Studio uh, is now selling her hand dyed yarns as well um, hopefully I'll have some to show you at some point soon uh, and I'm sure it's Wild Spinner or Spinster, but I will link to it in the show notes um, when I finally get around to doing them. I might try and catch up on them tonight. Um, so yes, Annie was also showcasing her yarns there and we've got some exciting projects and things hopefully coming up in the, in the, ne in the next couple of months. Um, so I met tons of new people, tons of lovely people, it went far better than I could possibly possibly ever have imagined. Uh, there was a steady stream of customers all the way through the day and it was a very successful day for all of us, I think. Uh, I met some ladies who said they'd seen my podcast, which was a little bit, ooh, I still feel a bit embarrassed about it, but I'm trying to be proud and brave about these things. Um, and... Just trying to think if there's anything particular. Oh, I dyed a new colourway. Um, well, I dyed several new colourways for the event, which some of which I'm going to show you in a minute. And one lady bought um, a skein of a, a very mottled dark brown skein. It was actually part of a shawl kit, and we broke it up for her because she's entering. I think it's a Chatsworth show. And the theme is Alice in Wonderland and she was looking for the perfect uh, Cheshire Cat shade which is the original Cheshire Cat not the Disney pink and purple Cheshire Cat so that was that I have some absolutely beautiful um, display items including my shawl and my silver lining socks which I've shown you many times before but my friend Paula also um, knitted me an item and loaned me an item that she's knitted with um, some some of my yarn also which was a gift for her for, for Christmas so firstly I want to show you this beautiful sock head hat which she knitted me from uh, Poison Ivy and I just think it's really good to um, to see what it looks like knitted up it spirals beautifully I really like that and you get some really nice combinations of colour throughout the arm and then obviously as the rows get denser a slight change in the correlation of the colour placement and things but it's gorgeous I love it so much and I'm very very grateful to her for knitting that for me so that's going to remain one of my display items now which I'm really happy with if I can stop myself from wearing it I'll keep that on for a bit and then these are some socks which she knitted for me in Cosmic Wonder and I made some temporary sock blockers out of black card so that they look nice on the stand. I've pulled them up too far now. Don't do that, Susan. I'll spoil them. And I'm just so happy with this. A lady came in who'd knitted a shawl. Um, it was Carrie's one skein shawl knitted in My Cosmic Wonder, which she bought from Wise Heart Studio, and it was absolutely gorgeous. I wanted to cry. My babies are out in the world and people are knitting with them. It's a bit emotional. 
so anyway there you go that's cosmic wonder knitted up i'm so happy with how they look sorry the camera focusy light thing is doing some strange behavior anyway so as i said there will be more projects and collaborations and exciting things coming up from me and the ladies from white art studio and carry with a little bit of luck i'll tell you more about that when i can um where am i yeah so to all of you who came to visit me and bought yarn and supported me and said lovely things to me at national yarn shop day at wise heart studio don't know why i find that so hard to say i want to say a huge thank you i was totally overwhelmed by the support and the love and the kindness and the interest that i was shown and I would particularly like to say thank you to um, both Kate and Annie for hosting the event and treating me so kindly and being so supportive and encouraging because I would never be as far on with my yarn dyeing pursuits as I am without them. They've supported me from the get-go. And also I'd like to say thank you to Carrie for being such a lovely um, fellow yarn dyer, uh, stall holder, um, and for imparting such a lot of advice and information. Um, so yes, thank you to all of you. It was a real pleasure I had such a lot of fun and I'm really looking forward now. I've found my feet with it. Really looking forward to doing more events like that. It was so lovely. Okay, so let me tell you a little bit about Green Lambkin Yarn. As I already said, this shawl pattern, when I have finished typing it up, test knitted it and named it, is going to be released into the wild. Die my little babies. Uh, and one of the things that I did for the, um, for the event at the weekend was something that Kate, Nanny and I had discussed, which was creating um, sets for two colour shawls. And I, um, I thought about that and I actually kept looking at cobweb and bramble, which were colours that had died separately of each other and thinking how well they went together. So I did actually have several sets of these. I ended up breaking a couple of them up because a couple of people wanted to buy just cobweb. Um, but I did actually sell one we, and the lady has given me her email and is very patiently waiting for me to send her the pattern. So these were a new addition. And as I said, I also did another two skein set and I haven't got the other colour to show you. But this is um, Shepherd's Turkish Delight. So I will be dyeing some more of these and I will be listing these in the shop. Uh, along with Cheshire Cat, which was the colour I've decided to call it um, after the lady chose it to make a Cheshire Cat with, which is a darker version. It has um, some of this caramelly brown colour, a smidge of the um, chilli red and then a lot of a darker chestnut brown over the top of it. So I'm going to probably be listing some sets and some separates as well of all four of these colours. So this was one of my new colours. I also added to my um, collection of um, vegetable colour uh, vegetable colourways, uh, and I'd, as you remember, I'd already done heirloom tomatoes. And last week, I developed a colour called baby beetroots, which, as you can imagine, is lots of deep reds and blacks, and it's gorgeous. I dyed two skeins of it, and they both sold. So I can't show it to you now. Hopefully, by next week, I'm having a day or two off of dyeing after I did so much last week but hopefully later on in the week I'll be doing some more if not at the weekend and next week I will have you babe, have baby beetroots to show you and the other new colourway which I dyed was um, something that I've been thinking about for quite a while and I remember sharing it on the Green Lambkin yarn page on Facebook I think I might have actually talked about it as well I wanted to dye a colour inspired by um, fantastic be somewhere to find them and there were quite a few 
Newt Scamanders out there and there were quite a few um, Niffler yarns out there. And I didn't want to do the Whooper, is it, the, the um, Owl, because the colours of the Owl are very similar to the colours of my Bramble yarn. Uh, but my favourite creature from um, Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them was the Debbie Guys, um, which are very caring, very, very sweet and very shy natured creature. Uh, and it's mostly silvery white with long coat, a bit like a mixture between a sloth and a baboon kind of a, a looking creature, but it's silvery grey and white. And then its eyes are amber, really bright amber. And then there are speckles of black on it. So this is my Demi Guys colourway, and I'm going to be listing this in the shop very soon as well and I'm in love with it. I'm seriously tempted to knit myself some socks or mittens or something with this. And then the other thing which has finally happened is my, uh, let me get one out of the bag so it doesn't reflect, my Wingardium Leviosa socks are finally published. They've been checked, everything seems to work well. My lovely husband, who is a graphic designer, I'm going to show you too close, because this is going to be a pattern to pay for. Uh, my lovely husband has, oh, there's two there, has designed them for me, and made them look all professional and glossy, which is something I cannot do myself. Um, and I'm going to be listing these shortly. So these are going to be available for £3.50 on Etsy and Ravelry, I believe. So keep your eyes out for that coming. And then, sure, that'll be coming as well. And what I would like to know is, would you like to buy this shawl in kit form? So yarn, pattern, stitch markers. Is that something you would be interested in? Leave me comments, message me anything like that I might even put some kind of a survey poll thing up on uh, Instagram or Etsy or uh, not Etsy um, Facebook whatever to see what people think about it but I'd really like to do that really would uh, I think that's everything I've got to show you and tell you about this week um, in terms of general uh, blither there's not a lot going on really we're all just bimbling along at our own pace i'm hopeful as i say i'm hopefully going to get some more dyeing done later this week but i do need a couple of days away from the sink because too much dyeing doth a very achy back create but i am going to really have to up my game because if i'm going to do these two events in june and july i need to be dying regularly and building stock up because there's no way that i can push to at the last minute to any great extent because I will just knack myself up completely. So I need to really develop myself a proper schedule of dying and keep to it and keep keep cracking the whip for myself. Uh, so yeah, that's it really for the rest of the day. I hope to have a little bit of respite, a little bit of enjoyable viewing and then and plenty of knitting time interspersed with rushing around for dental appointments and swimming lessons. So I do hope I hear from you about my ideas and things um, and I will sign off for this week and hopefully see you next Monday. Ta-ta for now my lovely.